Before we jump into tonight's episode, I thought it might be fun to do some halfway predictions. You know, we hit our one month anniversaries this episode. So I thought it might be fun to go through the couples really quick and give my prediction on whether or not I think that they are going to stay together on decision day. So here, we're gonna run through this pretty quick. Nope, 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 nope. All right, we got that out of the way. Let's get into tonight's episode. You know we're starting with Morgan and Ben. Every other channel, they're probably leaving Morgan and Ben, ben to the end. We're getting into it immediately because this has been a disaster pretty much right from the start. You know, they had the delayed, the delayed wedding. They had the COVID issues. They couldn't even make it through the honeymoon before Morgan decided that she was going to turn into Morgan. And now we have whatever this was this week, uh, which I would say is the end of their relationship. You know, I don't think there's any coming back from this. Uh, what, we, what did we learn today? Morgan, a very unrealistic person. She's probably a bad person. Uh, you know, how she has any form of relationship in her life, I have no idea. I don't even think I'd be her friend if she paid me. Uh, and, you know, I'm definitely team Ben here all the way because let's break this whole thing down very simply. Let's say you're in a relationship uh, and whatever, something's happened in your relationship, maybe something hasn't happened in your relationship, but you want a little advice from an outside source. So you go to one of your friends, you talk, you talk things through with them, uh, then maybe they give you some helpful advice, maybe they give you some bad advice, but uh, either way, you know, you hopefully feel a little bit better about the situation, go back to your relationship, carry on with your life. Uh, that seems like pretty normal behavior to me. So what has happened here? Ben has gone and talked about his relationship to Justin. And Justin basically either told or Alexis heard and Alexis went back to Morgan. Uh, one thing that we know about Alexis is she loves stirring the pot. She loves starting drama. We saw that on high display this episode. We saw that uh, on display for the Morgan and Ben issues as well. Uh, it's, it's who she is. It's who her character is. And Morgan bought it hook, line, and sinker. And now this relationship is over. So let's run through my notes here. Uh, I think I got about as many notes on these two as I do everybody else. So we're probably going to be talking about these two for quite a while. Morgan won't give Ben anything, or, or pardon me, won't give anything to Ben when they talk with each other and also forbids Ben from talking to other people. So like what is his life supposed to be that he basically, you know, turns to a wall, just talks to the wall, and gets nothing in return? Like, is that supposed to be his existence? Is that supposed to be his life for, uh, because for, otherwise, if he goes and talks to somebody else, it's betrayal? Uh, Morgan, right from the start, has been looking for her way out, and she has been doing this all season long. This shouldn't be a shock to anyone. She was doing it on the honeymoon, and has been trying to get her get out of this all season long. You know, it's almost shocking that she made it a month, and she didn't pull, what was her name last, last season, Alyssa? who checked out on like day two <laughs> and that relationship was done in like a week. You know, that would have been better off for Morgan. It would have been better off for her, her personal life because now everyone has seen that, how she treats people in her life. Everyone has seen how like how many issues that she has personally, uh, like how she's not moved on from anything in her past and how everything has just hung with her and moving forward. Her strategy is we don't talk to nobody about nothing. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. And she probably should have known that this show was not going to be for her because 
a lot of the show is talking about stuff. And if you don't want to do that, how are you supposed to be on this show? How are you supposed to be in a marriage? How are you supposed to have friends? How are you supposed to have a relationship with, with your family? Uh, and, you know, from what we've seen, I'm not sure that Morgan has many of those things in her life. And you know what? It's her own damn fault. Um, Morgan, she's just not a great person. Thinks that Ben is the problem in the relationship and that she's perfect which is just not been the case ben has you know has he been awkward has he been struggling with things absolutely but from what we've seen his heart is in the right place uh, he just needs to maybe get his mind to that same place. He's a little awkward this, with the relationship stuff, which is probably one of the reasons why he signed up for this show, is because he struggles to form and build those relationships. Um, and that, that, a lot of that comes from his shyness and awkwardness. And Morgan just do doesn't seem to want to accept anything about Ben. We've seen them try to have conversations. She retains nothing that Ben says. And when, they, when Morgan was letting Ben explain himself, it sure sounded a lot like Morgan just talking herself. You know, she goes, Ben, I'm going to let you explain yourself, and you better blah, 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 blah. And every time he tried to talk, she just, she just ran right over top of him. You know, she doesn't want a partner. She doesn't want a, an equal. She wants somebody that she can walk all over. She wants a little puppy dog that she can drag around and just have them be... I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know what that relationship would be. But she is not looking for a husband. She's not looking for... A friend you know she's just looking for somebody to basically uh, be there for her to complain about things and to cook her dinner that's what she wants she doesn't like just hire somebody hire somebody Morgan fulfill all of your needs in life you know you she might not be able to pay me to be her friend but I'm sure there's lots of people out there that she could pay to be her friend um, Morgan seems to think that never talking about your problems is how to tackle life. Uh, just absolutely ridiculous if you don't talk, talk about things. And you know, maybe you don't have to talk about everything, but if you aren't willing to talk about anything, that just creates more and more and more issues, which uh, she clearly has in her life, which she's clearly uh, has fostered and festered in her life been get as far away from this woman as you can Ben, you're gonna come out on the other side of this looking golden there are going to be women uh, there are going to be people just low flying into your DMS to go, to get a chance to meet you to get a chance to know you to to be in a relationship with you Morgan on the other hand I don't think that, that she's going to have the same experience at the end of this show. I expect lots of love and outpouring for, for Ben and absolutely none for Morgan. Uh, big props to Ben. Very impressive that he kept his cool during that entire exchange. Morgan was just... She was just being a bully. Like, let's, let's just not beat around the bush. She was being a bully to him trying to run him over not letting him speak you know get up up on her high horse like she's the almighty and uh whew, just too much so props to ben for keeping his cool for keeping a level head for trying to appease her which maybe wasn't the best strategy but i know for sure that if relationship or not if somebody treated me that way in real life that I would not be coming back at them with a calm level uh, demeanor so um, yeah Ben good for you because I would not have been able to do the same I mentioned it before but Morgan seems to think that talking to other people is betrayal like how silly 
is that. Like that if you went to somebody in your life for advice about something that had happened with somebody else or about that person, that somehow that is betrayal. Absolutely absurd. Absolutely ridiculous. Talking to other people is not betrayal. The the initial thing on the on the honeymoon, colossal misunderstanding. Colossal miscommunication. Morgan basically told a Ben that she wasn't done her education for nursing and that Ben wasn't to talk about, to, to tell anybody else about that. Ben kind of freaked out thinking that she was operating as a nurse under false pretenses, went and spoke with Justin about it, and then later Morgan fully explained the situation and and been apologized but Morgan did not forgive but you know if like some if my wife like came to me and said like hey uh, I don't I, or I'm still short a course for, to do my profession uh, I'm probably gonna seek somebody out to talk about that that's not a hey I'm gonna just stuff this in my back pocket and we can revisit that later. No, 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 no. I fully understand where Ben was coming from, but he didn't have all the information because Morgan, the master of communication, failed to give Ben the entire picture. Um, if you ever meet somebody like Morgan, do anything in your power to keep them out of your life. That person is pure toxicity. That person is pure negativity. That person is somebody who's only going to bring you sadness and misery in your life and is not worth your time. Um, and then after all of that, after everything, Ben still won't even say a bad word about Morgan. He won't even say one unkind word about here. How mind-blowing is that? Like, put yourself in Ben's shoes and tell me honestly that you wouldn't have horrible, bad things to say about Morgan because I know I would because I know I just did. All right, let's shut the door on Morgan and Ben. As far as I'm concerned, that relationship is over. It's done. Yeah, they're on the preview. I don't care. They are done. Let's move on to happier things like Alexis and Justin. What could possibly, we can't possibly have more than one couple going off the rails in one week, can we? Uh, Alexis, we mentioned, we had to bring her up in the Morgan and Ben section. She loves the drama. Uh, she's always throwing things in people's faces and then surprised when people don't like it. You know, Justin kind of fuels that drama as well, but not to the level of Alexis. You know, we both, we see them both, uh, especially at the dinner scene, both kind of poking and prodding at each other to elicit a response. Alexis, she was doing some masterful manipulation at that dinner. The way that she was uh, changing changing her levels and emotions her, and, and where, where she was constantly until she got Justin into that disadvantageous position. She got up on that high horse and she rode it all the way to the end of the episode. Like, I, like we almost have to go back and re-watch that whole scene to really see, you know, how Alexis played that whole thing out. You know, going from, you, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything about our marriage. Like, like, like Justin's not going to take that as, as an, uh oh, uh oh, like, like everybody's gone around the circle, said something, and now all of a sudden Alexis is just like, I don't want to talk about it. You know, and he's he's trying he's trying to talk to her privately. You know, she gets him down in that position, like like why don't why do you want to talk about it? Why do you want to talk about it? 
And then loudly, she just brings it all up, makes it an entire scene. Uh, like that's the behavior of somebody who wants that drama. She wants the drama. Justin also wants the drama. Uh, and, and, you know, that is one of the downfalls of their entire relationship. You know, they clearly really like each other. Uh, but I get the feeling that they are going to figure out more and more and more ways to sabotage their relationship. You know, they both feed off the ups and downs uh, in their lives. And I don't think that's going to stop even well after decision day, no matter what their decision day is. Um, yeah. I don't really want to talk about them anymore. Uh, let me know, please, what your thoughts are on Alexis and Justin. Of the, like, They might say yes on decision day, but their life will be constant turmoil and constant fights for the rest of their lives. But hey, maybe that is what they want. Stacia and Nate. One of the best scenes of the entire show was Stacia's face during the dog tutorial from Kristen. Absolutely hilarious. When Kristen busted out those the, the nose wrinkle wipes that she was going to have to do <laughs> to Luna and, and, and Stacia was just like hilarious. I loved it. Um, the post snup. The whole post snup thing was a bit shocking to me but probably not in the way that you think. It's only shocking to me because a prenup should be mandatory on a show with a over 80% divorce rate. Like, they, every single person on the show should have a prenup. That should be standard. It should be, it should be absolutely mandatory. This show should not be allowed to exist without everyone signing prenups. Like, it's insanity if no one is having prenups on this show. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, there is no way I would ever sign up for a show like this without having a prenup in place beforehand. Uh, ridiculous. Like... Great that Nate, that Nate signed that the the post snap like really it shouldn't even be a thought because it shouldn't have to exist in the first place because it should be signed before they ever get on the air. Nate made up for one of his mistakes from last week by saying that he was falling in love with Stasha. He should have said that last week instead of saying, "Hey, I'm like a four out of ten. It just say that you're falling in love. Just say that you're starting to fall in love. Something along those lines because obviously Sasha needs to hear it. She needs to hear that. She needs those things. She needs that conf constant, uh, those constant affirmations. You know, that's what she wants. That's what she needs to build that trust, build the relationship. And, you know... Nate was trying to do that, but not in the way that she was responding to. And I think that now she's get, he's getting it a little more and will start doing things in the way that she does respond to. So I, want, I got a question for Stasha. Do you have a tattoo for every single relationship that has lasted to the one month marker? Just a little bit of advice for everybody out there. Do not get matching tattoos with someone you've only known for a month. Just don't do it. And and even even to go a, a step further, like like the whole like the heart heart person's name. Uh, I remember my mom always talking about while she was growing up that she had an she had a, uh, an uncle with like a, a heart tattoo with somebody's name in it that was not the person they were married to got the tattoo broke up with that person and ended ended up marrying somebody else but that was maybe a little bit too off the off the beaten path uh let's move on 
but we're on to somehow becoming the two boring couples of the season. Who had Kristen and Mitch falling down into the boring category this uh, at the start of the season? I don't think any of us did. And like, yeah, there was a moment this episode, but outside of that moment, we barely saw these two, or at least it felt that way. Uh, because when they're together, they just seem like they're fine. And that's it. Move on. Uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm not doing yoga with Mitch. I'm just not. That, uh, no. I'm not going to sit sit there beside somebody groaning and grunting the entire time. No, thank you. Mitch, you're doing it to unwind. You're doing it to, you know, free up some space in that whole whole brain of yours. But so is everybody else. And if they're distracted by your groaning and grunting, then the yoga ain't working for them. So uh, just maybe might want to tone that down a little bit moving forward. As soon as they showed people getting on that party bus, I was excited to see how Mitch was going to behave. And it uh, turns out I should have been more excited about Chris, well, what Kristen was going to do because she had a little bit of a rant at the dinner table and it kind of caught me off guard a little bit. And one big thing that she said it was basically that the expectation is for Kristen to handle situations whereas Mitch is not expected to be handled those situations and then gets praised for doing the basic little things and immediately afterwards we heard Justin praise Mitch for how he handled the situation and like yes Mitch did handle the situation very well you know Kristen really expressed herself in a way that I don't think many of us expected and, you know, Mitch just had, like, a, a calm, cool response to it. Uh, and then Justin, Justin giving Mitch the old pat on the back right afterwards. Hilarious. Like Kristen just said. Uh, but that was, that was kind of it for them. Uh, ultimately, I think that that little blow up by Kristen is going to be good for them. Gives her a little more stance in the relationship you know may I think moving forward it's not going to be all about Mitch and Mitch's feelings it's going to be about Kristen's too lastly Lindy and Miguel didn't write a damn thing for these two so yeah I guess they're still on the show and they've uh, they're just our super boring couple so that's going to wrap things up for this week as always thank you so much for watching everybody and I'm out.